Hey everybody, Dr. Scott Stevens here with a video on the easiest way to create a Pareto diagram. There are several different ways to create a Pareto diagram in Excel, but this one's the quickest. Uh, a warning before we get started. I know that this technique will work if you're using um, Excel on the PC, a recent version, but the Mac sometimes lacks several years behind the PC, so if the button that I show you is not there, you'll have to use one of the other techniques described either in another video or in the book in order to create your Pareto diagram. The Pareto diagram is useful when you're trying to separate between the important few and the relatively unimportant many. And the thing I want to point out to you is that really this is a kind of graph that you only want to use with nominal data. If you use it with numerical data or if you use it with ordinal data, the category orders end up being weird and that often causes people more confusion than the information which is provided by the graph. So I'd only use this for nominal data, and that's what I've got here. I've got all the different states listed, and what I'm graphing here for each one of those is what their population is, okay? I'm also having how many electoral votes they've got, but we'll come back and look at that in a moment. Some dates have a lot, states have a lot more people than others. would like to get a sense of that. So here's an alphabetic list of all the states. I'm going to turn this into a Pareto diagram. Let's go ahead and do it, and then we'll take a look and see what we've ended up with. I'm going to highlight all the states and their populations. I actually have included DC here in the list so that they're actually 51 rather than 50 states. And then I'm going to say insert and go over here to this little icon here, which is actually the histogram icon. Now I'll hit the down arrow and you'll see a list here. The histogram tool by itself in Excel, I do not encourage you to use this. It creates bars that are strange with weird cutoffs, as you can see in the graph below. These are ugly and there are better ways to do histograms. Please see the histogram video for that. On the other hand, right next to it is the Pareto diagram and this does a lovely job. I'll click on it and here's my graph. We can clean it up a little bit. I'm going to, for example, change the title to population of US states 2019. And my vertical axis is currently listed in millions here. That's a lot of zeros. I'll show you something else you can change. You can go into here and say, um, Format, oops, format axis, and change the display units to millions. And that gets rid of all of those zeros. Of course, now that population of the state's not 40 or 45, it's 40 or 45 million. So we really should add an axis label here. I'm going to go to my chart design features, say add chart element, axis title, primary vertical. And I'll name this title, this axis um, population millions. Okay. You should always have a unit so people know what you're talking about. Uh, did I spell it quickly? Population. Yeah, it looks okay. Okay. Good enough. It's pretty clear what's on the horizontal axis. And as you can see, there are 51 states or 51 on this list, but they're not all listed. I could do several things about that. The most obvious one being just to make the graph wider until I get everybody. They're all there now. Don't need to get carried away. But I want to make sure that all the states are showing. I can narrow it a little bit more if I want. At some point, it's going to start making them go away, but I guess I'm satisfied with that. There you go. Okay, so what are we seeing here? A Pareto diagram contains, consists of two things. The first one is a bar chart, but the items are listed from most common to least common. So even though this was an alphabetical list over here, you'll see that now we start California, Texas, Florida, New York, and so on. And we go all the way down to Wyoming, which has the lowest population of all the states. In addition to that population bar chart, which is right off the left scale, there's also this orange line here. That is essentially an ogive. It's not technically an ogive because we're not using a categorical, I'm sorry, numeric variable, but it's a running total of what we've gotten everything so far. This line is right off of the other axis. So that if I go over here, that line is about 10%. So about 10% of the people are in California. If I look at the first two states together, a, a, a total, it comes up to be somewhere close to 20% and so on. So for example, if I wanted to know where 50% of the population came from, 50% is right here in the middle of this. I could go over, hit the axis and go down and I would get to somewhere around North Carolina or so. Indication, the state from North Carolina to the left, these few states over here, provide half of the entire US population. That's only about one, two, three, four, five, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, about 10 states, about half of all of the US population falls in just the first 10 states. Okay, the other half is in the other 50 states, other 49, I'm sorry, the other uh, 41 states, including DC. 
Okay, so the total line is right off of the vertical with the right-hand side, and the bars are right off the left-hand side. Obviously, that thing's going to go up to 100%, because by the time you get to the last category, everybody's been counted. This is a cumulative graph. It tells you how much is in that category or to the left, okay? And it's red off the right-hand axis. Okay, that's how you read these things. Let's do one more and compare this graph to one of electoral votes. So I'll do the same thing here, but of course I don't want to have that middle column uh, used. I want to have this one used. So instead, I'll highlight these guys like this, and then I'll hold down the control key to do what's called an extended select, and I'll choose this column as well. And once again, do exactly the same thing that I did before, choosing the Pareto diagram and putting it in. Okay, I'm not going to go through the work of titling this thing the way that I did last time, just to save a little bit of time, but I'd like to compare these two graphs and see what's going on. We said that by the time we got to the 10th state, we had about 50% of all of the people um, in our uh, population. How about as far as electoral votes? The first 10 states, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, still go to North Carolina, but if I go up to the line now and over this way, well, once again, it's still about 50%. So those 10 states also comprise 50% of all of the electoral votes. It's about the same in the two different ways. Okay, that's basically all you have to do in order to be able to cr create a, uh, an OJAV. It's not very complicated, and they're not too hard to read either. So uh, practice with them a little bit, make sure that you're comfortable.